Hello my amazing tarot friends, it's Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and of course welcome if this is your first time visiting, I hope you're staying well. Um, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough for you of a deck called the Elemental Power Tarot, which is uh, in front of me, it's by Lee, uh, Melinda Lee Holm, uh, and she's like sort of a self-help guru, um, you know, she's been around 25 years studying and practice of tarot, she's a priestess, specializing in translating divine wisdom into guidance, you know what I mean? So, uh, the illustrator is Rohan Daniel Eason. This was a deck I was on the fence about because I'm trying to be selective in what I buy. It's like, how many decks do you need with the words elemental in it, you know? Uh, but I found this to be really unique uh, and just different than anything I have. And, and I thought it was crucial to my uh, tarot study. And uh, I was just very curious. I wanted to read the book and so forth. But, so, I'm going to show you the deck. Um, but it's meant... It seems to be created with like path working or um, you know creative visualization uh, in mind. The cardstock is very very much like the mass market version of the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot. That's what it feels like. It's like very papery, and it's kind of like I have like a love hate relationship with this kind because the colors show really well. They feel really nice. I love the fill paper in my hands, uh, but the downside is you know um, you can really beat these cards up easily, especially if you get them wet. So, you know, it can be good and bad. Um, the book is going to be crucial for you, I think, uh, at least when you're stuck or if you're not getting what the image is saying to you. Uh, because not only does it tell you what's going on in the image, but it gives you some guidance. And also you have like a whole section in, like here. So you stand on the edge of a great cliff. Suspend it in time between yesterday and tomorrow. Senses far beyond sight, touch, hearing, taste, and smell. Assure you that there is nothing to fear and nothing to mourn. Though the terrain beyond the cliff's edge is obscured, you know in the depth of your being that it is safe to step forward. A small dog smiles in agreement. I thought I think that's funny that it was a dog. I thought it was a hedgehog. Um, <laughs> so that there's a perfect example why the book would be great. But um, so yeah, I mean you know you can really step into this image and kind of, um, you know, I guess engage your unconscious in a way. So so this is the magician, and so I'm just going to read briefly. Uh, a selection of tools lies before you, carriers of the sacred wisdom of the cardinal elements of air, earth, fire, and water. As you survey your choices, deciding on what, will, what you will create in your cauldron, a shimmering light fills your being. You recognize it instantly as the fifth element, spirit. You can... Your ritual can begin. So. Well, it's just very interesting. Um, here's the high priestess. You know, not putting people in a deck that, especially with the majors, that are, you know, the high priestess is a person. So you are alluding to a person without actually having the person in the picture. But uh, you have this, like, grand stairway with the pomegranates and the pillars, and it's very Rider Waite Smith, like, in its imagery. Um, but, um, you know, you can really use your imagination. You know, it's like you walk into the temples. Like, what do you see when you walk in there? You know, who do you see? What do they What do they say to you? You know? Uh, the other night I was watching Outlander. And uh, it was season four, which they just added on Netflix. And um, uh, Brianna is the daughter. And she's back in time. She's from modern era. And she's at a dinner party back in history. She's sort of time traveling. Uh, and she does this like sort of as a Pollard trick. She 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 asks the question, "You're walking in the forest, and you're walking with one other person. Who is this person? You know, it could be anybody. You know." And so I thought to myself, Har my friend Harry. I actually did it, and I thought my friend Harry, my best friend from growing up, who I haven't seen in like ages. Uh, and the second part of the question was, you know, you you come to a clearing. And you see an animal. What animal do you see? I saw a deer, a buck. Um, and it was a clearing that I was very familiar with. Uh, in the woods that I go to upstate. Um, and I just thought about it like the whole night. But when I went to bed, I actually had these vivid dreams about my friend Harry. You know? And it's like that one question prompted in my unconscious this whole thing like maybe i miss him you know who knows what 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 reason it was him that i was walking with but i dreamed of him you know and it's like 
that's your unconscious for you. It's a very powerful force. Uh, it motivates every action that we do. You know, our unconscious is involved in some capacity, uh, whether we know it or not. You know, it's kind of more or less who we are. You know, so, but it's very mysterious and very complicated. So, path working, creative visualization. There, there are ways to engage the unconscious to step into a picture and engage archetypes and so forth. Anyway, this one's a bit tricky. So it's a lush garden of your making lies before you, some carefully tended and pruned, some left to grow wild. All creation here is made possible by the grace of your loving heart, surrounded by uh, fecundity and beauty, your idea of what is possible in your life and the world grows evolves with the seasons and evolves with the seasons so, anyway i'm going to flip through here uh, i'm going to make some comments so uh, this is the emperor obviously and i'm like what does this have to do with the emperor uh but you have this like really modern kind of um apartment the structure uh, and you have a window there and you can see outside that it's in the middle of nowhere uh, and you have a ram there it's like you know it's it's in the middle of the wilderness uh, but you have this beautiful, like, well-organized place, and it's like, this is what's possible when you put, you know, when you apply logic and resources, the, that emperor kind of energy, when you apply that to, uh, a situation, like being in the wilderness, that, that's how you, you know, come up with the, this amazing property in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's like you're cheating nature, because you are human, and you have logic and reason, and all these things that can make us powerful, like the emperor. And you have the hierophant here. So this was a pretty image as well. I like the cat, and I like you know the the statue of Buddha. Uh, it's like a, a shrine, and uh, it's just very pretty. You know. And again, like not having people in the lover's card, like. How do you do that? And I think it was just really well executed here. You know, you have polarity. You have the geometric black and white shapes and things uh, in the one side, the masculine side, and then on the feminine, you have the flowers and the colors, the different colors and so forth. Uh, and it's just about duality. And you have that plant in, in the middle that sort of sh unites you, you know. The, 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 the plant grows on both sides. Which I guess is a symbol for love, in a way, or like whatever binds you together. And we have the chariot. I love this this image. It's a very beautiful image. Um, so it's the strength card, uh, and you have a, this big lion, this huge male lion, uh, in a field of wildflowers, and he's laying belly up, which is position that cats lay in when they're only when they're comfortable and they trust their surroundings it's like this hugely powerful animal can like rip you to shreds but he's like just in his in a very comfortable relaxed state uh you know so very interesting and then the hermit so cabin in the woods again that whole path working concept you know you step through the door who do you see you know that kind of thing like I really, when I saw this image, I was just so tempted to open that door with my mind, you know, and that's what this deck is really good for. And the Wheel of Fortune. So I'm just going to go a little faster here. This one was, I say that and then I start talking. Um, I have the heart, you have the heart on one side and the feather on the other on the scale. Uh, and they weigh the same amount, you know, they're equal. But the heart is much heavier in reality than the feather. Uh, the book says something like, you know, after a lifetime of good deeds, you know, you have a light heart and it equals the feather. But it also, in a way, kind of, it's like, you know, your emotions should match your intellect kind of thing. You know, and they should be balanced, in perfect balance. So this is a tricky image to, to see, to look at. Um, you you kind of have to turn it upside down. It's the hangman. Um, just like any other hangman, you want to turn it upside down. But you can see it's like very mysterious, dreamlike, mystical kind of place uh, in the middle of a, like a secret forest with 
The mushrooms to me allude to like, you know, that transcendental state, psychedelic type state. Um, and then, you know, you're in this like place where the trees are all distorted and it just looks like a trip, you know. Uh, and the book says something like you can almost hear the trees speaking to you, you know, and that's so true. It's like, it's just very, very hangman energy. But I don't want to say like the hangman is all about tripping or, you know, taking mushrooms or acid or anything like that, because some people do seem to think that it's not, it's a, it's about gaining understanding. I think like, um, sacred important knowledge you know what I mean that you only get through in some cases people say that taking hallucinogenics is cheating because there are ways to reach there that place without drugs you know um, like through meditation and through other ways you know so you have a barren field with a plant uh, for the death card uh, it's so like a plant growing in the middle of a barren field with the with a flag planted with the bee and the crossbones, and so obviously the bees are dying. Uh, there was a fire there actually, and um, that's what the book says. And so there's smoke and so forth, but so it's death. But in the same sense, you have growth there. You know, you have the, the plants growing. So it's like, you know, it's like even though everything is dead, it will come back. And then we have temperance. That's an interesting kind of image, you know, very beautiful. The artwork in this is just stunning. Some of the images are a little tricky, like this one, the devil. Like that's that's kind of tricky. I don't really, you know, it has to do with obstacles and maybe I should read this one. Yeah, let me read the devil. A heavy thicket of thorns blocks your way. A pile of gold glitters a short distance away, but you cannot reach it, or rather, you choose not to. Because the potential pain of crawling through the thorns outweighs the pleasure of reaching your treasure. Unsure how to proceed, you sit and gaze longingly at something you believe is unattainable. So, you know, it may not jibe with your meanings, too, of these cards. Like, But for me, that's always... For one, you don't have to read the book. You can just kind of take what you want out of the images, but... You know, it's kind of good to get different perspectives and different meanings, uh, specific meanings of of uh, cards. You know, that's one thing I like about decks like this. And we have the star. I love this moon card. And there's like a jack o' lantern there. UFO. Flying saucer. A full moon shines over a remote lake deep in the forest. You float on the surface, gazing up at the sky and taking in the scene. A path leads back from the shore into the woods, guarded by a jack-o'-lantern at the trailhead. It's unclear whether it stands as a warning or an invitation. And the sun. Okay, so this one is another one I liked. Um, you know, you have buried under the ground. It's very different kind of judgment card. You know, you don't see a card like this too often with judgment, but it's uh, you have all this trash buried and and treasure, as well as bones and animals and things from the past, like sort of coming up and rising up to the surface, including poison, good good things and bad things just coming back to you, almost like karma kind of thing. So. Uh, and also one thing I didn't point out was that the, you know, it's obvious, but you have the Hebrew letter Shin there. Uh, it's the Golden Dawn system. And then you have also the astrological correspondence to it, the right. Uh, and there's a bit in the book about that as well. So, and then last but not least, we have the world. And let me just show you the pips. So I'm going to do this quickly because um, they are pip cards. So, you know, and they're not in order exactly, but... Um, the suit of pentacles very earthly gold coins it's like roots it's a beautiful deck it's, it's a nice pip deck I love the um, core card so you have the knight there 
just the element that's the page and then you have the queen and the king would be somewhere i just don't know where right now just mixed in i love that ace ace of cups i mean it's so beautiful reminds me somewhat of hokusawi the um the painter the big wave just a little but you can almost get lost in in that you know it's very very beautiful there's the court cards for the water for the queen knight and the king and then the page very very beautiful deck Reminds me a little of the Jungian Tarot, which is interesting because the Jungian Tarot was created for pathworking, for creative visualization. Um, you know, Jung was a huge proponent of creative visualization. Some people say he even wrote the book, the Red Book, uh, by you know doing this sort of meditation, stepping in and engaging with the arch archetypes and so forth. But anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys. Oh, let me show you one other deck really quickly. This is not going to be like a walkthrough. I just want to show you something I got. Uh, and I was surprised because it was very inexpensive. It cost me $13 uh, through their website. So this is the Boda Tarot deck. Um, Builders of the Aditum, I think is how you pronounce it. I could might pronounce that wrong. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they do. Tarot is a big part of their philosophy. I do know that Paul Foster Case uh, wrote a, an illustrious book in Tarot, uh, and he's a, a member there, like a well-known member. Um, and uh, that's about the extent of my knowledge to it. But I always wanted one of their decks because I know they were black and white. They were like sort of color your own. Uh, and they come with a book, and I just thought it would have been a good piece to have in my collection um to read and um the so this is it's called highlights of tarot with coloring instructions so as you can see it's like a color your own tarot deck um these aren't going to be in order um some of them are some of them aren't but let me find the majors because i know they're around somewhere okay so it's a pip deck, but here we go. It's very, very Rider Waite Smith. Very. If you're into like coloring your own tarot deck, this would be something that would probably interest you. Um, it's not printed on like the best card stock because, like I said, it is color your own, so it's very matte and very papery. But it's pretty tough. I mean, it's like something you might get from like Ill Many Yellow or something. You know, I've gotten decks from people like that. So just very quickly, they're not in order, but you can see they're very, very Rider Waite Smith. And this is what the backs look like. It's like nothing fancy, but it's. Um, I was watching Brant's live and he was with Melissa Zupan and I asked Melissa about Boda because I've been thinking a, a bit about their deck and I was thinking about trying to find like a vintage one or something but I didn't know anything about them really. I just have seen the images uh, out there and so I wanted one but I didn't know that they were still around and that you can order them from their website and uh, only for $13 plus shipping. But there are, there are other books by like Paul Foster Case and uh, a lot of other type of books uh, in their store. You can probably get some other things and make the shipping worthwhile. But and these are the court cards. So that was a very the emperor was very kind of um, almost uh, Marseille. It's got the legs crossed and so forth, just a little. And then the pips are very um, numerological. They they remind me of like. Um, El Gran Taro Esoterico a little bit, like, very numerological. There's a lot of, like, information cards in there. Oh, there's the world. And judgment. There's some missing uh, majors. But, you know, a lot of ships. Uh, symbols. And shapes is what I meant to say. Oh. 
That's very interesting. Anyway, like I said, I'll put that down below. And I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, I hope this was uh, interesting for you. And uh, like always, thank you very much. Until next time, love and peace. Bye-bye.